Hi, uh, what's up? Welcome to the next part. Uh, please go check out the previous part in order to gauge your bearings, okay, guys? In the previous part, I was um, out here speaking about how it is that a Christian cannot lose their salvation, first and foremost, okay? And I went into a whole explanation about that, so you're going to have to check out the previous part to gauge that. Mm -hmm. But I did speak about how it is that the devil would never, ever let his practitioners know that. He would never, ever let his uh, servants know that to a point where, because he, he, he is aware of the fact that there are some among them that are going to repent. There are some among, among them that will inevitably choose Jesus later on. And then upon choosing Christ, they are going to essentially proliferate this lie when they give their testimony sometimes. They will say, seeing as they were trained by the devil, that when I was in the kingdom of darkness, this is what the devil showed me doing to a Christian. And I, w I was in the previous part explaining to you categories of people that look Christian but aren't really. And how it is that there's three of them according to the parable of the sower that don't bear fruit. They aren't actually truly born again. And these are the ones that look Christian to the occult and are able to be tossed, uh, to be thrown away. However, there's one guy in the parable of the sower that bears fruit 30 fold over, 60 fold over and 100 fold over that cannot be uprooted, cannot be plucked under the hand of Christ. But because we are growing wheat among tares with them, they clump us in one group. And so they focus on derailing all of us until they meet a true Christian and then they start, they just imagine, they start to think of us as just a tough case, a tough case instead of an impossible one. And then I concluded by saying in the previous part that when then you are made to obsess over this one guy because you realize that you have prospered to knock down these three, it is never about her or him. It is never about this person. It's always about you. It's always about Satan finishing you off. Because when you are a buzzing bee in front of the nose of God, because when you persecute Christians, you are like one who is actually afflicting God himself with a sword. At some point, if God still, if, if, if it's not the Lord's um, prerogative to martyr that saint through you, if the Lord does not want that person to die, but he intends for them to still continue to do a certain thing on earth, they have a job just like Elijah was told by Jezebel, may the, may the gods deal with me ever so severely if by this time tomorrow Elijah's not dead. And God was like, through the angel of the Lord, get up and eat, your journey's still too great when Elijah wanted to die telling him that there are 7,000 others that have not knelt to Baal. Mm. God told Elijah, you have a job. And Elijah not even didn't even die. Elijah got carried in, uh, sorry, he got taken away by a chariot of fire, right? The guy didn't even die, he got raptured. So Jezebel was frankly arrogant, and she's the one that died. She's the one that was swatted out of the way. So when uh, servants of darkness are made to focus, especially on one case that they imagine is like a tough stain, that they will ultimately get out. They just have to work harder on it in comparison to all other three people, what they don't realize is that we are not a tough stain. We are an impossible feat. You cannot conquer us. You cannot make us be a brute. You can't take us away from God. It's impossible. It's impossible. And all these three other people that appeared to have been apostatized did not apostatize because they were never of us. They are demons. They leave us because they were never of us. And so the devil tends to get people in the occult to concentrate very vehemently. All right? On true believers at their own peril because of having observed them mow to the ground false Christians false Christians and when you it's written in God's word that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force we are made to take the kingdom of heaven by force because the kingdom of darkness is made violent against us but that force we are guaranteed prosperity in it we as Christians are the ones that are awarded essentially military status to conquer we are like the IDF right now that the world completely hates. However, it's going into Rafa in that final operation because absent of doing the Rafa mission, Hamas wins. Whether or not the world is interested in Israel winning is irrelevant. They're going to win. It's that basic. And Christians are like that. The world does not like us. The world resents us. The world humiliates itself in an attempt to finish us off. And we always come out prosperous in the end. There's only one time in history where Christians get conquered, and that's only because it's God's plan. It's in the tribulation. It's written in God's word that he will give uh, Satan authority to make war with the saints and to overcome them. But that's only that he might be the one to rock up with his scepter, his power, his might, breath of his mouth, mow them to the ground. It is a strong delusion. Do you understand? But in the run-up too, we are told that we're going to trample on serpents and, scorp and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. That the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That we will refute every time that accuses us in the judgment and we will condemn it. That even though we might endure long drawn wars, we are guaranteed to win, to prosper in the end. And so far as we're godly, the battle is the Lord's, not ours. And so we're guaranteed prosperity in that war. That's what's good. We're, we're guaranteed victory in that war, however long it might linger for. Mine in particular has been going for like a whole decade, but 
the thing that causes people in the kingdom of darkness to have an arrogance and a pump against believers, against true Christians, is their observation of how much they knocked down, like dominoes, false ones. The departed conglomerate that have given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Those that you could toss to and from by every wind of doctrine. Those that you were able to slather with ungodliness, reputational damage, all these other things that you are attempting to do the, to the body of Christ. They were never of us. You don't know that. You don't know the difference. So that's why I'm very, I, I tend to take occult testimonies with a pinch of salt like people who have been redeemed from the occult when they give their testimonies i take them with a pinch of salt because this is what i believe about them okay i do believe they're born again i do believe the lord did rescue them but one thing they lack a lot of them is biblical veracity they need to launder their experiences in the occult with the word of god and what is true the devil is a deceiver so they cannot just use it as bankable bible truth what they see in the occult because the devil is just by his very nature a deceiver so he even deceives occult practitioners in the stuff that they're made to see. Two, upon repenting and giving their lives to Christ, because some of them inevitably do, okay? Then come and bring those things they saw as res respectable doctrines in Christianity. It's happening all across Africa, where there's all these people repenting from the kingdom of darkness. Out here trying to retrain the body of Christ as to what really is truth. Those of us who have never dabbled, they're trying to convince us. For some of the things that they are trying to introduce as doctrines in christianity and it's like you worked for the devil for 20 years girl he is not a truth teller what you saw in there you need to literally write all of it off as deception you can tell us what you saw but you need to launder what you saw with the word of god and so since christ says that you can't pluck anyone from his hand when you prospered in the occult to sow infiltration into a church that caused a, a whole falling away a departing by the entire congregation you need to go back to the Bible and be like, what, 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 was, what likely happened over there? What happened in that church where I caused a pastor to hate Jesus? What happened where I caused a whole church to split? What happened? What, what was likely the thing that went on there? And upon then getting in the scriptures, being Berean and validating what you hear against the word of God, your conclusion would be that pastor that ended up hating Jesus must have belonged to one of the three categories in the parable of the sower who was not rooted and so when the torrent came when i came rocked up as a witch flying in with a boot print on his face persecuting him he fell away he fell away my spells worked on him i dizzied him into apostasy he was never of us that's why he left that's how you need to look at it so confess that yes i i did cause a lot of havoc inside some churches but the bible makes it clear that certain things are not a truth Therefore, the only way that that could have happened back then when I made Christians fall away from Jesus must be that they were never in him. It must mean that they were never in him. You can't just say, now that you're Christian, no, guys, you know, people say that uh, a Christian can't lose their salvation. I used to be in the occult. I used to be a witch and I, I have caused a real pastor to walk away. I've caused uh, this one girl that was always fasting and praying and she ended up in the club because of me. She was never of us. And witches... The thing is, eventually you ca you happen upon one of us. We are few and far between. We are sparsely scattered. We grow up with the tears. And so it's hard to recognize this, us. Christ was toppling the tables with the money changers. Precisely because his house was supposed to be a house of prayer. But they made it a den full of thieves. That typology is still applicable today. Where people in the temple of God are supposed to be doing God's business. Going about their father's business. But they are just exchanging money using the name of God as a means for financial gain. That's what's going on. And when a true Christian rocks up, all they can do is what Christ did. Topple the tables with the money changers and lament, complain, and set the record straight. A true, a true Christian will always make war with the indiscretion of unbiblical Christianity. They will always be an apologist against it. They will always topple the money changers. A true believer will always massacre the desecration of God's temple. They will in and of themselves be violent against the desecration of God's temple. That's what true Christians do. They fight the falsehood. They become apologists against it. So they are therefore hugely disrespected and greatly abhorred by the three categories in the parable of the sower that fall away. We are hated by the false body of Christ and they make a big majority. They do what they've done to me. They isolate us, put us in the dregs of society, ascertain that no one hears. They jeer, mock, jest coarsely at us that we might appear unregenerate, reviling the living daylights out of us, like the Pharisees that they are. 
but it's written in God's word that they will put us before governors and kings and that the day is going to come when upon doing all that stuff, they will do so thinking they're doing a service to God. They will stand with each other in their great numbers. And you being occult practitioners, given that all you do is afflict the body of Christ, well, much of what you do is afflict the body of Christ. You will then especially focus or hone in on, zone in on the Christian that even other Christians don't like. And you call them Christians. The Christian that even other Christians don't like. And this chick or this dude will have been toppling money changers, tables all over these streets, badly spoken about by the false body of Christ. And then the devil who then makes you look at them eventually without letting you know that they're the real deal. And so you can't touch them. They're too legit to quit like MC Hammer. Yeah, you will use their beleaguerment on all sides by the occult as your weapon. You will also use their mistreatment and their misfortune at the hands of other professing Christians as your weapon. You will focus all of your might, your energies with all different kinds of torrents against them to break down, beat down this house when it cannot be brought down. Remember, the other ones that were out here using God's name as a means of financial gain, out here gambling in God's household. Mm. They have built their house upon the sand. They don't care for God's commandments. I told you about the parable of the sower in the previous part, where it is that I was explaining a conglomerate of people, for instance, in the business arena who call themselves Christians, but they still partake in unsavory business practices. Money changes. That's what they are. These people will have been afflicting of true Christians, having ostracized them. You will have successfully brought low the false conglomerate and then focused on us, maybe even sometimes being supported by the false body of Christ. And you will use all different kinds of waves to beat them down. These people are building their houses upon the sand and it's written in God's word that if you take God, if you take God's word and you don't put it into practice, you're like one who's building your house on the sand, like a sand castle. Waves are going to come and beat it down. But if your house is built upon the rock, nothing can bring you low. You are established. You are firmly rooted. The cornerstone is the stone that the builders have rejected, but it is your foundation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. You're rooted. They are not. They're beaten down. And you will expect that just as you being the torrent, the tsunami, the wave at the beach that brought down their sand castle, that you're going to bring down our actual foundation structure brick and mortar built with the blood sweat and tears of a suffering saint you will imagine that somebody built upon the rock like that that you can bring them low with just some ocean water and they will not come down that's when then that uh, scripture becomes a reality the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force that's when you see the real thrust and the real impetus of christianity that's when you recognize the true power of god because this person these people these true Christians tend to be so severely outnumbered in this apostate society, sometimes even being isolated entirely by themselves, never mind being outnumbered. They're just the only one fighting an army, the only one they're in isolation. They're the only one making war with a system, a structure, a monolith. And yet, according to God's word, not a single hair on their head is going to perish. You, they, you will not be able to resist the words that God is going to give them that are going to come out of their mouths. They will have so much might and so much power in their unitary state that you will have no other choice but to see that God is with this person. You will have no other choice but to see. The kingdom of heaven has always been a remnant and that remnant has always performed such great feats amidst battalions upon battalions of armies that people could do nothing but eventually admit, acknowledge that, oh my goodness, this person is coming in the name of the Lord truly, obviously, obviously. And one of the biggest things that tends to validate a Christian as a true believer is the fact that they tend to overwhelm single-handedly or as just a minority, like I said, beleaguerments, a whole like army of hostile minions for the devil, just struggling to bring down one little girl, just struggling to bring down just two dudes, just a small little Baptist church, like a whole country's occult coven organization having a rough life with only one family in the country. And these people are mighty men in the country. They are well high ranked in the occult, regarded across continents. And yet they can't break down a dad, a mom, and the two daughters. And the only reason is because these people are truly consecrated to God. Their whole entire plan, strategy, for whatever they're trying to do, constantly being interjected and interrupted, therefore, by the small little praying family in this neighborhood and upon bringing all different kinds of weapons against them and failing 
it then eventually after two years of making their lives a living nightmare with occult magic gets to some people in this organization to the point of realizing that yo guys i mean come on like this just keep this real and be straight we are legion we are many and we have been coming up against a family for two years three years straight and even though we might have cost them their house even though we might have made them at some point live out of a camper even though we might have gotten the little girl the the the, the, the teenage girl expelled from school Hebatung, these people are still ruining our plans. They are still uprooting our strategies. And they're still praying away every last one of our attempts at their lives. How many times have we tried to put them in a car accident? How many times have we tried to kill this family and every one of them is still alive, albeit having a hard life because of us? How many other such families have we brought to the ground every time we wanted something, we did it and we got it. And these people are not moving. They're not barging. There comes a time when people in the occult wake up to smell the coffee to realize that there is power in the name of Christ. But they don't know the difference between this family and every other family that they knocked out. Every other person that they knocked out. They just think that they're a tough case. And that's the thing that makes them linger for a year, for two years, for three years. They keep trying over and over and over again thinking that it's just a tough case but even with bad stains there's always a, a you know a strong good washing machine there's always vanish there's always mac there's always omo we can try surf we can try bleach they they keep thinking that we're just a tough stain that will eventually come out with different interventions until one day they they, they recognize that it is unlikely going to be truth that we're going to win over them and this is when their folly then starts to evidence that they're rather Esau instead of Jacob. They don't repent now that they've seen the power of God, like in Korah's rebellion in the wilderness, like in Balaam's era. They don't repent despite seeing the power of God to block cursing of God's people. Like with Balaam's era, like a whole donkey had to talk to the guy. Why are you bridling me? You can't curse those whom God has blessed. You cannot curse those whom God has blessed. Even upon witnessing such miracles as these, they still then either go back to the drawing board or they then now want to tap in to this power but without truly being godly that's the dream that i got you've been dealing occult practitioners with false christians this whole time you've prospered to knock them out you've prospered to marry the women to you you have prospered to do all different kinds of weird stuff and here it is that you've been beating on a woman one little christian for years and she's not coming down she keeps on getting back up again She's like Wolverine. None of your spells work. You have tried to smother my ministry, shut it down. You have tried to make me stop doing stuff like exercise. You have come at me with a hail of bullets over and over and over again. And now you've come to the recognition that there is power in my God. And upon recognizing that there is power in my God, instead of truly repent, you think that just like, goodness, my goodness, guys, you think that just like with Satan, where it is that you're dabbling with him, you're experimenting with him. You test out a spell and it works. You thoroughly think that you can dabble with Jesus the way that you dabble with witchcraft. That's the dream that I got. Occult practitioners dabbling with Jesus because they finally, after years of knocking out fake Christians, fake, of knocking out Christians that are actually truly fake, after years of failing abysmally with a true believer, however, no, sorry, after years of messing with unbelievers that claim to be believers, then happening upon one Christian that they have lingered on for a year, two, three, four, five years until it be to one. One person. You then get to the humble recognition, at least at a minimum, that there is power in her God. But that humble recognition is not producing fruit. It is not producing repentance. You are bad lump. You are bad bread. You are a bad batch to be thrown in the furnace. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not producing repentance. It is producing what would be the equivalent or tenement of Jesus as a genie in a bottle? Rub it. Let it come out and say, what master can I do for you? That God will regard you as a master. He is this namby-pamby God sitting in the sky just hoping that you're going to adore him one day. Namby-pamby, master in the sky, just really, it would be so great if you just liked me. I would adore if you just had me. You can just take me and just test me. Just try me, you know? You think God is sitting in heaven begging, begging, begging the human race to test it, just to see where he's coming from. The Lord already knows who are his. He knows he's going to love him. He knows he's going to come to him and he knows who is bad batch. He knows who is going to mock him. 
And it's written in his word that do not be deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. You are Amnon, trying to rape Tamar by any means necessary. And I had a dream of some dastardly man out here literally getting on his knees to ask God for me as a wife. After trying Corbella. This man has been through Corbella. He has been through all different kinds of stuff, death spells too. And then finally he put down the magic wand and was like, fine, so duh, you have power. You have power. Okay, fine. I will then come to you organically and ask you to give me Garabo Singh as your god, obviously. You're obviously god. My goodness. It would be like Jezebel maintaining Baal worship after the prophets of Baal get massacred. It, it would be like Jezebel maintaining Baal worship after Elijah does the miracle on Mount Carmel. And because she saw the power of God in that miracle, then decides to experiment in her shrine with calling on the name of Jesus. Experiment in her shrine with calling on the name of Jesus because Elijah showed that he is a God that can do stuff for people. Yes, like it. That level of mockery. That level of mockery. That's what I saw in my dream. Some evil man or men, conglomerate of men that are very incredibly misogynistic, believe women should be sitting at home doing nothing but bearing a whole bunch of babies, believe that the glory of women must never ever be shown to society, that women must be put in their place. So this man has not had rubbish ideologies uprooted out of him at all. But he recognizes that there is power in the God of this one particular woman that they've been busy with for years, failing abysmally to afflict her with sorcery. And upon discovering that there is power in the God of this one woman, yeah. However, no other person has made it evident that there is power in that God because we've managed to knock them out like dominoes. Seeing as Garabo showed that Jesus is, I mean, duh, duh, kind of gaudy. Yeah, fine, fine. Literally, he put down his magic wand for five seconds. Put down his corbel. Abandoned. Desperation. Using. Rufis. And actually prayed to God. But not in a true contriteness. Just as a rubbing of a genie in a bottle. An experimentation with Christianity. The way that they experiment with witchcraft. A dabbling with Jesus. Dabbling with Kabang. Like, I wait on God for how many years? For a husband? How many years? For anything at all that I ask for in prayer. In growing in sanctification and grow in grace, actually having gotten regenerated, born again, resisting the devil, him fleeing from me, from me, all that jazz. Like that's what I went through to get to this point. And some random fool is then going to put down his magic wand for five seconds to experiment with praying to Jesus to get me, seeing as Corbella failed. That's what I saw in my dream. And that random rubbish is only got to this person or this, these people. They only got to that place because they had been persecuting a true Christian for years and failing to achieve the end goal that they wanted to achieve in this person. And just because of failing to achieve what they tried to achieve, only then are they then like thinking that maybe this is a God we need to experiment with out of our many gods, out of our myriads of gods, out of our many gods. This one can maybe try. Yeah, I can test him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, this is what God has to say. God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. And at this point, you are looking very much like Esau. I'm just selling your birthright for a piece of meat. You are Amnon. You are trying to rape a woman. You are trying to take a gangani. Do you understand? You are not contrite. You have not been sanctified. You have not been born again. You've not been regenerated. You are still evil. You are still a Satanist. You are still a witch. You are still this random ugly thing that South Africa can do without. Is that basic? Yeah. And with you being that thing, you are still therefore condemned. And your prayer to God is a stench up his nostrils. This is what it's written in God's word. That the prayers of the wicked are an abomination to Emmanuel. An abomination. I had a dream of this person just going to God on some give me garab. Like Papa, he was so rude approaching the throne of grace. Because he recognized that there is power in the God of garab. Yeah, the same God that you imagine has power to rescue me. You think that he does not have power within that rescuing of me from your sorcery. To give me a man that actually waited on him for a wife, a man that's actually consecrated, that God regenerated, sanctified, a man that has actually borne fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold over. You think that that same God does not have power to bring a dude that did not just yesterday's attempt to dabble with Christianity because he wants a Christian girl. You think that that same God does not have power to give me what I ask for in prayer. You are all very naive and you are seriously evil. You are seriously evil in a way that's going to get you swatted by your holy God because you are a fly in Sinti. Do you understand? Flying around in front of God's nose. Top of that, you have just sent out a stench up his nose. Because the prayers of the wicked are an abomination to God. You do best to recognize yourself as exactly what you are. Lost and in dire need of redemption. You need to get saved at all. You need to forget about being with women that don't belong to you. 
You need to utterly walk away from your experimentation with all different kinds of weird gods you have been displayed to that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now it's time to appropriately respond to that, that you might display yourself as a good batch, as a prodigal son, instead of just some rando that is inevitably going to go to hell because your condemnation has been written about long ago. Do not look at all the other Christians you've knocked down to the ground and imagine that I'm possible. No, they were never gods. They were not Christian. They were not the real deal. They did not believe, be, belong to Jesus. They never believed by faith. They were never saved. That's why you were able to knock them out with like a sock of, like, like a bat, wham them well into outer space and back. You were able to kick them to the curb properly because they never knew God. They never walked in his power. The Lord is not sitting in heaven wincing every single time a, a Christian apostatizes. Every single time a Christian walks away from him, God is not sitting in heaven on some, no, 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 please don't do that, don't do that. No, 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 no. What? Travesty and abomination of thought that it is ridiculous to even imagine that a holy God can be that namby-pamby, that weak, that lackluster, that incapable utterly of maintaining his own saints in a bunch. It is blasphemous. And the fact that you have happened upon a real believer could actually be the only olive branch you will ever receive. Because now that you've basically spent your careers in the occult, afflicting fake Christians and succeeding, and now you are finally happening upon the real deal, it means you're at the end of the road like boys to men. You're at the end of the road. One of two things can happen here. A fork, okay? You can either repent, go to heaven, know the Lord truly, or perish. Because a lot of times when you crash into a Christian, a real one, after having never really met one at all in your entire career as an occult practitioner, that is a moment of truth. That tends to be the end of the road. For any occult practitioner within their occult state, they can't continue from that point going forward. They will either have to die or live. Repent or perish is what meeting a Christian as an occult practitioner is. And if you choose to perish, God is going to swat you like a fly and you're going to enter into eternity having basically suspected that there is something to Jesus and yet ignored him. Ignored that because you will have been so abusive of a Christian failing, however, abysmally at getting to that Christian constantly just experimenting, sprinkling salt on your ugly meat. You will have been doing that until eventually God was like, grace has done for you. Shut the doors. Gah. That's when you fall into hell. That's when you fall into hell. And this is your moment of truth. Happening upon my ministry is the end of the road for you, occult practitioners within your occultism. You can't carry on. I, I already did videos of this nature before explaining that from here going forward, there is no coming back. There's no going back to your life as normal. The, the, this is the end. It is either life or death. You are at a fork. Repent or perish. One of the two. So you are either dying or repenting. But you can't carry on as normal. You are done for in that state. So do yourselves a gargantuan favor and repent. Because right now, your attempts to dabble with Christianity are going to get you condemned ever so immediately. You will fall into the abyss. Still planning still what is this like um uh, hooking up an itinerary for next week as to what spells you're going to cast while you are still out here plotting and scheming you will enter into a car accident or get a heart attack or get into an aneurysm whatever might be the thing that takes you out but this thing that you're doing right now and messing with a christian all along you've been swimming around sharky oceans all along you've been a piranha in the midst of fake christians knowing away at their toes eating them whole that's that's what you've been all this time but this time around you are around a real believer we are few and far between sparsely scattered you hardly ever meet them and when you do meet them you don't even know the difference between them and the the, the, the rest of these other rando guys that aren't really born again you eventually get a see that this is a true christian because time shows you that it's a true christian due to the fact that you fail for years on them they are the tough case that just will not capitulate. And if you keep at that case, they're going to die. I'm not doing RIP body bag killing it. Not any minute now. You are literally on your deathbeds. You are dying. You are passing away. Right as I speak, the clock is, is fast running out of sand. Hours. The hourglass. La pella. La fufureja. Right now, as we speak, you are literally knocking at the door of the eternal lake of fire. Honing in the lippy zigana. Honing. Do you think just taking you in his stride? Le naive. Le naive. Corbelang ea luna. Ya nyoko. E et hatisizeng. 
Musadi, I can't how much the way I onion thing, I onion yanga thing, the way killing onion yanga thing. Literally busy. Why, why? Twenty four hours. Literally busy. Like you keep on going back to the drawing board, trying to start some motor that's never gonna start. Literally busy. Yeah, okay. Lord Hokafa, Lord Hokafa, I let the hearing and cut. And I cannot go to any other place. I cannot hear any. I love horror motor. All time now, I love it. I will have been warning you in advance, day after day. Literally busy. Like that video, you see, my see whom in the way I come at her. Literally busy. Carrera. Over and over again, keep while leading your cousin. Since the business is Zama, who cram was that is not theirs. I do not belong to Lona, Lanyonta, Lanyonta, Lankutra, Gagworthy, and totally like the kind of stuff on her. Go for any contents of Mala, Lord Cats, the willing your tanker thing about the bees. Libbies, Libatai, Libasadi, Gaditsuna, Mimahadima, and I live busy wash, Libashapaka on. Libatai, you grab them, Labanka, Babang, Liba Pamusik, like I know Lazay alone. Liba Pamusaka Pamuka, they alone. Basaid. Hor bonar de pissing falling in love le banana baba in singor baba rata kang kan eh le bata il jono le bata na longza le bata na hong longza jaga halit ay le lagu ta tsunami the rest of these other women hehe na ma women of a different status I'm thirty one to be exact I'm born again kem mo side one more than Jesus jaga halit ay ah side ay kene tabaza hong mamela haki wa hakana katabaro kufit le kalon ko fela he kalon halit ay le wona you've been getting warned over and over and over again sa aruri Kimo mtu juu nuko bwa kasi tu ana vivi, kima tala bato mama huana bangu kutoe, kuzaki kiki kenta bato mama bato mama South Africa langbor, langbor. Mara all this nonsense yalo na yako loya, le dawe, le nwele taka nyesa. Haki tibo wata langalo na nyaupe, le itubile. Hi, hard knock, le hi, marijuana. Haki tibo roge ni, le 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 zangor le sako nuko soba up, kubo na, hodi la taka fal. Mara loya di heleng langkutoa, loya di heleng right now even as I speak, lo kena di heleng le sabato le sadi kien, lo kuto la begi tu drawing board. No hotel la morahu, go drawing bodong. Cause literally it's already king. It's only a matter of time. Romo fraza mutako. Romo fraza shira wa roe fraza. Roe fraza. Ebe yezan tuwe runa rubata ora yez. Le tengi le baka kanga halgatse. Muna tuwe. Jeka haudi bizo na onzo rapella mudi momo kupore. Aku fena for mosadi. Onzo na le basa di baba moko morahu ba usile morahu. Utwe la buta kera we one. How we one? How no si abuti? How we one? So jaga haudi bizo kompita le banga tali le bakana. Over mosadi we one. Anar na kitoba le o ofeng. Or long get a some hello then you fell. Mahosh. And take it busy between the lago fell. Playing musical chess. Levanti. So the ambition style on Naki Flanka Halika the redirector to Batu Baba. Because he must have one. And I belong to only one man. And then all of y'all, Halu qualify. Go fell a libody. La lawyer. Lead to Lemata Guan. Lead to Len Yao Bele. Hi. Hi. Had knock flag. I get to go gang and lead to Len Cocaine. And the Lishna fashion for 24 hours a day. Halena might sell. Le loyal South Africa ega ofela to a point where harna harna girl le pumolo le tsexi the whole country ka Africa ga ofela we were supposed to be the best country in all of Africa mara bona ngore re tlhoka fela ga botlo kwa gaka because na le business le re loyal into oblivion le expect le ngeng exactly what are you expecting he ehle ke fela ngare ke ka re penta na tswang mo nna le sa dikene ka ha le sa dikene taba tsa pholoso if you don't want redemption baga you don't got to take it bottom line is na mara ga le tlong vur ba yana kwa ke so sa ruri Let's ask to open Jeffela. Why are we a wheel? It's a little busy gun. This is not going to continue indefinitely. Get a look at how long I got thing. You better understand or not. I'm not up for grabs. Neither will I ever be. How could I not get into Munna or Pamukati or Munna Tong Pamulang Nagaritar? Munna or Tui Zing, who is at the right spell, I cry, loop, who Lunyana, a one or two Zembalwa, until ultimately a low gram side was belonging to Anna Hakonyalwa, Kimunna, one Kutra, or Sigilang Tumpaka Corvela Kerlahan, no, see, not even once. Ain't nobody that has ever doubled with sorcery on me ever gonna touch me like Kutla. Marlena Eva Aker, until the experiment I got myself on the copper line, I'm on internet thing. Halena Maizeo, patong. Halena Maizeo, I wouldn't be surprised if Laba Loyal is a celebrity or Laba Noir if if Baka Ba prepared for Lord Jalilon. Jaga Halena Eva Aker, na kanna or the transfer get about Nike get out of my schedule, eh? Get it over here. The transfer get about I don't have money, eh? That that poverty alone is yaka. Ele disse que mat mat é quando ele não era nenhum o pegou fala que aí fez um bamba um bamba pegou fala e fez ele ele quando ele já é fluido ele de methylated spirits inteligente não há anything at all that can intoxicate you ele busy got on é because I get the halang to belong to him so my halang can really decency ya hong ngola dia manya na to at least find out to regarabo o tá boa ele nana ele vai trazer lá o lot testa o re efeito o que ele capitou ele torna que nem a mel o co YouTube following o suplemento dele e-mail o que ele tem que fazer mais Kia lora, kia lora, bato mudi mo mfadi dreamy lady vision. Jaga haki bana haki na anaro na noro wana utola sasa sebaga sisi kaka. Mo pelak, unzo pimi le mo pelak au le mo nusu bilang mate kwa ne anaro na noro ulasta sasa sebaga sisi kaka. Nego chola le ex boyfriend de ngwe ne le busy kana ritaran kimo lori le kero bati le na mo petong kia kire ma tum boyfriend de kibone something ya na kil maring hadi noha pelak ha. Baga was out here pretending answer she ba koko koko kumu mo left and right de aswara mo atukera mo acting like he doesn't know what's going on. That was before I was born again. Kimo n. 
nyoko ya haika ofela mara zanga khona go interpret that now that ke o photse mo mo ra bona tsho song i'm all grown up in christ i've been raised up now i'm bigger and i'm better now yeah that's what's going to get born so ke is in tweke bona se ke khona we understand ke interpret ke interpret no ke interpret jo no eh that's what's good ja ka ha ke khona go bona ga mga sentle ga kana seeing as my my vision has been made so much more crystal clear se ke a pare ke di contact lens di contact lenses tsa ko mahodi mo go bona sentle gore grasha boy di hoetsa la mona ana no ona no ro tlasta mona o lo yanga botlo ga kana o ta uwe spisa parafino so no so no le onzo di piso spina mo spotong ga ro topo ona ro o lasta neng nna ke khona go bona se ke bona ana ngut ke a bona ene le go bona go teng ke go understand so tswa mo minais ga le tsadi tsene taba tsa o tswa mo nna modimo o le swata la ngutwa ja ka black box plat pa e lo you you going to be swatted the lord is going to eradicate you cuz the busy linkenze nare saruri sebaka hu ya hu ile ha ke zore giketseng i don't know whether i'm coming or going ana ntho every day nake nense ke tsoga ke lo ra lona la nyontsa la nyontsa le dawe le tsubile matakwane le nwele js fluid le nwele di methylated spirit cells purple le di nwele la nkhutla le di nwele le di kwentse and now you are high and because of how high you are John only bees le blom le le 20 liga ya ke tsip 45 outside mo sadi om nos hoping or one of you all is going to be the biggest and be all and best of the which of an occult practitioner o to khonang fine le go lo crash here ena sala ba tlekolo lo or le jojo lo long khatats long khatats to point where now this time around because nefela just me by me and virtue of sheer exhaustion go letsa le tau go bo go basic ya ke le tau le tau sa ruli le le tau 24 hours a day ha le thole phumulo ka ho tau wa lona ke flang ka re ke lo ka la ko rehab young rehab lo overcoming addiction ya lona ya whatever la nkutla cuz at this present moment if you don't tsena ko yona rehab ya tenge jaka Amy Winehouse lo mo joina ka 27 club ake mara na mo di 46 lo joina Amy Winehouse cuz ake re lona just like her we try to tell you to go to rehab la rinya ya so ha le sebatlo ya rehabbing bye bye e ya di heleng ene le tenge na ha ko tseba ha le le di heleng ya ake re cuz ha leng tsebile di strangers mara la loy mara bottom line is ke tlo feel ntja fela reprieve ko ko utlwa relief go tlang ka re se se ke po se 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 ke se ke loko lotswe jano e because wana o tlhoka fetse ntja phuman game zinja phuman game i'm sending out in christ name kwen k bye bye